And as a thank you to all my viewers and subscribers, Mass Samper is now offering a 10% discount. If you want to get cool shirts like this one or other mini four-wheel drive swag like stickers for your car or stickers for your toolboxes, you can get them from massdamper.jp. Don't forget to use the discount code ZENBLUSTER on checkout. There are also links in the video description down below and check them out. They actually have some pretty neat stuff. Thank you again and now on with the show. Hey guys, it's Jan, also known as ZENBLUSTER and today we're going to take a look at the Japan Cup car that I built um, for this year for 2018. I was supposed to race this over there, but um, the event ended up getting cancelled because the hurricane came in. And um, yeah, this is the car that never got to race, even though I'd uh, spent a bit of time on it. Um, nothing we could do. Um, it was a natural disaster, so not much um, can be done about that type of stuff. So um, before we continue, I'd like to thank a few people. Um, Scott from the XN Provisions. I bought the majority of the parts for this build from them and if you want to check them out the link is in the video description down below dxnprovisions.com for the next part the body was actually painted by none other than jerry from massdamper.jp and uh, he sells um, stickers and uh, a lot of swag type stuff for mini four-wheel drive type of stuff so yeah he ended up painting this body for me that ended up um helping me like separate what, what I needed to do and um, yeah it's actually it's one of my favorite paint jobs that I've ever had um, yeah I couldn't have done it better obviously myself so yeah quite cool in my opinion so yeah check them out massdamper.jp is his link and then of course uh, Mad Tang I actually asked him to build my tires uh, again this year it's actually quite good so um, yeah if you guys don't know Mad Tang, what are you doing and uh, what have you been doing with your mini four-wheel drive YouTube life? So yeah, he's he's one of the best. And last part is the, uh, what do you call it, the car catcher damper. Um, I got the part from DXN Provisions. They sell it and I had um, uh, Chris Lee Design um, customize it for me. This actually says Zen underneath it in my logo if you guys know that um, you guys should see that on the bottom right of my every one of my videos it's over there so he designed that for me he cut it up on a CNC machine so let's go ahead and uh, go through the parts of this car um, first part the body item number 15369 Avante Mark II polycarbonate I pick it because it's basically my favorite um, body design it it's very easy to mount and when you cut it up it gets pretty light for the chassis item number 95235 ms chassis pink and silver set as you can see there you go this is the pink and the silver set and i, I like to combine the colors because it gives you a little bit of uh, um offset in terms of the look if it was just all pink and it was just all silver it kind of looks weird okay guys so these are the screws item number one five four six four uh, the cap screw set there's actually you need two of them so you can see the cap screws are over here right there those are for the rollers 30 millimeter ones are over there and this is actually a 25 millimeter screw that is um, cut as you can see I cut it because you actually don't need a lot of the length and the, the extra length is just going to make it a little bit heavier um, it also includes some lock nuts and um, those parts we use for this thing right here right there and um, I prefer to use the steel lock nuts it just makes me worry a lot less because I don't want this to come off during a race next part is the countersunk screw set item number 15510 uh, you need two sets um, there's a lot of countersunk screws and I could show you just from the bottom um, there's quite a bit of them so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 and then in addition to that I have these sets too 16 17 18 19 20 21 yeah those are all countersunk in there as well it just um uh the countersunk screw set just helps everything basically lock in place and the uh, it prevents them from kind of shifting out because if you he if you keep the screw heads open 
the parts will kind of tend to slide off of each other and then these kind of just make them like stay locked together the last uh, major screw set that I have in here is the 38 millimeter threaded shaft right there and I use two of them uh, basically they are cut off at the tip as you can see what I ended up doing over here was instead of just um, cutting it down with a Dremel what I ended up doing was um, getting a cutter and then just cutting it off at the end and then um, filing it down so that it fit and then this is the, the same thing I did for the bottom side except I did more Dremel cuts right there so it's supposed to be direct um, there's shredding over here at the top still and then this is there just to keep it very smooth right there so and it, it'll it'll shake on its own axis on its own as well as the same time as the body damper actuates. Item number 15459 the side damper is basically the the cylinder shape right there and then the the bowl shape as you can see it's shaped like a bowl and you this is what right now this is what my setup is because um um, I've been racing it on the three lane and uh, there's quite a bit of jumps depending on the set depending on the track so that's what I have right now and then for the rear and this is actually a mixed uh, setup too I actually you need uh, this part in addition to um, using it for the anchor setup which is um, item number one five four seven eight you only need one of it it comes with this mass damper block and um, and also the uh, FRP plate underneath right there this thing where the anchor actually gets some um, anchored into so this is actually the car catcher item number 95383 and this is also kind of used up in a different part um, there's another part in here somewhere that uses the um, the car catcher it is inside there I don't know if you guys could see yeah you guys could be able to see it that is a car catcher right there underneath this um, ball cap so yeah that's um, for those two this is for the for the damper and then for the anchor setup as well okay next is item number 94897 13 millimeter dish type roller black okay so this is one of the parts that's a little bit old it's kind of hard to get now and um, this is uh, 13 millimeter actually and it was lathed down into 10 millimeter and uh, why why is it 10 millimeter jenny why don't you just keep 13 well okay so when you get into a corner right it's shaped like a curve and if you are using 13 millimeter and then you hit a corner and you have a 13 12 at the bottom What's going to happen is the only roller that's going to touch is the one at the top. When you're angled like this and the 13 millimeter is at the top, the only one that's going to work is the 13 because it's the largest diameter that's furthest up and then furthest forward. So and what ended up is going to happen is that all the pressure is going to be placed on that top roller. So what I prefer to do is I prefer to have the pressure being applied at the bottom. So as you can see, the bottom roller is actually getting used. So it's this side and then that side. If only, only when it tips too far forward is this um, 13, uh, 13 converted to 10 millimeter roller um, going to like hit the wall basically. So I just want to minimize a lot of the friction if I need to. And then it works sort of as a catch and stabilizer at the same time. And the next is item number 95423, 1312 double aluminum rollers. Those are these parts right here. And um, as you can see, they're not red. They were originally red. Um, <clears throat> I bought these from DXN Provisions and it actually matched the color of my build. And these are, to me, uh, red rollers that have been converted. Um, they were de-anodized to just plain basically to its bare aluminum and then re-anodized so that it's purple and actually looks pretty good so I don't know if he still has these in stock but uh, uh, that's what I that's what I ended up using for this build and it looks really good it matches well with the rest of my car so that's that the next is item number 95301 you need two of them 13 millimeter dish type lightweight rollers and as you can see that's what I have here in the back uh, right there and it just makes the whole build a little bit lighter 
and um yeah 13 millimeters is a is a good one um it, it's actually a little bit wide it's a right around at the widest setup that Tamiya gives us out of normal parts item number 15399 and then the only thing that we really need for those from that part is this thing right here is a brake mount i don't know if the camera can focus right there and then i have it basically angled a little bit forward right there so the edges are actually facing um, the wall and that just helps prevent it from tipping too much and uh, it kind of works a little bit as a stabilizer and a spacer at the same time item number 15473 um, you're gonna need two of them um, because i actually don't use a lot of the spacers that are in that set but what you do need is four of the 6.7 millimeter spacer okay so you need four of them for the suspension right there i don't know if you guys could see it but that the spacer that's inside is 6.7 millimeters and then on all four right there and then a 1.5 millimeter spacer that's underneath that from this side so you need four of those two and then you need an additional two more so you need six of them right there and then these are three millimeter spacers and then the same thing goes for these spacers right there and those are the only normal spacers that i use on this setup and that, that kind of keeps it a little bit lighter so that's why you need two of those and then item number 15381 and then basically this is a roller set but you only need these um these um roller bushings right here and um what it does is that they they you could make them work as spacers but it also what it also does is that it also makes the setup a little bit lighter so if you use this as um oh, what do you call it um spacers for basically your stabilizer or your roller setup it makes a uh, build a little bit lighter that's what i use for high speed now as well too so this uh, red aluminum lock nuts item number 15493 comes in six sets you need six of them each pack comes with five so let's count them one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So there you have it. 30 um, aluminum lock nuts on the build. Uh, it's not really required, but I mean, if you want to make your car lighter, because there's so much of them, if you use steel lock nuts, the whole setup will just be a lot heavier if you're not using red aluminum lock nuts so if you can i suggest you do but uh yeah it's gonna be quite expensive three you're gonna need three of nine five two five three the fully cowled plate you can uh, i'll show you where they are um let me see the first pieces are at the front this piece is that nine five two five three right there this whole piece at the back right here um that is 95253 and then underneath the anti-catch basically you, you need two of them huh? i must have just yeah i just scratched it up anyway and then this one over here is also 95253 so it's uh, i beveled the edge so that it does not cut catch and then it helps and it buckles too it's designed to help the the whole setup buckle if it actually catches on the wall right there so, so next is the fully cowled frp plate that is um frp um 15472 and you only really need the edges for this one um they're basically for preventing the front rollers from catching on the wall and um you just need two sets of them they are glued together so that it's three millimeters thick and then what i ended up doing is what i i ended up sanding them uh, on a, a disc sander um they i locked all four of them together and then that's what ended up making them pretty uniform if you end up actually looking at the shape they're pretty much the same shape from both sides you just lock them together and then you just sand them basically so that the edges are the same and then over here i did the same thing i had to do these separately i had to bevel these edges and then polish them with them 
1000 grit sandpaper and um that that just helps the these bumpers um the, that just helps prevent these bump bumpers from catching all right so um next is item number 95262 the 3 millimeter bare multi roller setting stay so this one's a little bit tough to see cuz it's an angle adjuster and the pivot catch at the same time so all right let me see if I could focus right there. All right, so this piece right here that's running across from this side to this side, that is a three millimeter piece. Um, what I ended up doing is that I ended up angling the plate at the same time too. So that's what's make, giving me the angle at the front. As you can see, it's um, this is five degrees right here at the front and that, that whole plate is angled by that um, angle adjuster and pivot catch at the same time. So. Not only does it adjust the angle, but it also catches my pivot at the same time as well. Item number 95259, and I'm using three of these guys. Okay, so um, 95259, it's basically the one that's shaped like a bow and arrow, and there's like a notch in the middle. That's this thing right here, this piece. And you need three of them. The first piece is the main anchor for the uh, pivot point right there. Everything is basically rubbered and like locked into it. And then that holds the plate on both sides as well. It's all kind of catching from the underneath. And then that's holding the pivot point right there. And that's what was meant for the uh, rocking straights in uh, the 2018 Japan Cup setup. And um, the other two plates are over here right here the uh item for it is the uh, what do you call it um i use them for the support basically for the suspension there's one over here and then there's one uh, over here and then this one i ended up what i ended up doing is quite a few things to the setup um let me see there i did a depth cut right there i don't know if you could see it there should be a washer in there too i don't remember what size um and then the same thing over here there's also a depth cut as well so that there's a little bit of an offset what i ended up why i did that was so that i could push the plate a little bit deeper in this plate right there so that's a little bit deep set into the part and what that allows it to do is raise it and then also support these other two plates a little bit better all right so those are the three nine five two five nine so next is Item number 15499. Oh, okay, so this is the front bumper right here. Um, what I ended up doing was cut this on the mill again, and then the same thing for this one. This whole piece is angle cut right there. So as you can see, it's fairly uniform all the way through to the other side. And that was placed on the mill at an angle, and then the mill cut the this right here. And as you can see, this one's already had uh, quite a few bumps, but yeah, I think I'm going to replace it at some point um, with a new part or a different part. I'm not sure yet. And that's a front bumper. That's where everything is connected to. So you can see it's also countersunk so that uh, if I need to put brakes over these screws, I can do that. And then that's what this part is for. And I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. So the next is the item number 15497, the reinforcing plate set 1319. You only need one of it um, because there's only one of it and then there's the part comes with two and that's actually this plate right here. It is just a support plate for the, the body damper. Okay, so the next part is item number 15495. You're going to need three of them. Um, this is the... Um, HG carbon reinforcing plate set and you're gonna need three sets because you need five pieces total so one two and that's for the main um, arm of the body damper frame and that allows it of course to do that that type of action you're gonna need two of them this was also cut on the CNC as you can see it's very uniform they I locked them both together and then I just did like one pass on the mill and that was yeah that's why I bought the mill it's so easy and the, these two parts are also the same part, 15495. And um, if you drop the batteries like I did, you're going to need to have this piece right here at the same time. So that's just help to, to help catch the battery so that it does not come out 
and this piece is actually cut a little bit differently than normal too okay there's a little bit of an angle right there right so if you if you check a little bit one of the reasons why I did that was that it allows the battery to drop even more so you can see that there's a difference in height right there the battery is sitting a little bit lower than normal and I actually have it sit lower than even um, what it was supposed to be before um, and what what the angling does is that it allows the battery to drop even lower than usual so you can see the angled cut so this is where the cut stops right from here and it spans all the way to that side and that whole plate is angled at, at I think seven degrees that's right seven degrees I ended up angling that seven degrees and that allows the, the battery to drop even lower than normal instead of cutting it out entirely which I've seen some other people do right there uh, I do not like that when you do the whole cut to drop the battery even lower what that does is that it weakens the support plate a lot and that it's more likely to break and what I ended up doing was just angling it so there's actually more carbon left on it still and that allows you to drop the 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 battery low but not have to actually worry about the FRP plate actually breaking easily on you so that's one of the things I don't know if anybody else has done that but that's what I did for this build there's one last piece that I didn't cover and I actually said that we were going to cover later and this is the another one of the plates um, of 15495 and if you as you can see it's not at a normal position and that is actually um, these two holes right here All right so what you do is you cut this off right there right at that hole away like basically you want to cut the hole out so it's basically just going to look like this right that piece and then the same thing on this side and then you basically just round out the piece on the edges slowly you just basically fit it and then fit it and fit it over again so what that allows you to do is if you need to crawl the brakes back in a little bit further that's a, that's the way for you to be able to support the whole brake still if you put the brake pads underneath that so that's why I did that item number 20 uh, item number 95089 and this is one of the oldest pieces I have on this kit on this car and it's this piece right here the main frame of the uh, what do you call it of the body damper frame and this has been milled as well as you can see the, the shape is not a normal shape anymore I've cut it so that it's uh, just um, uh, holding on to the dampers in a very in you know in a very small manner so that it's a lot lighter I cut this edges right there um, you could see the way that it was cut and the same thing was done on the other side as well try to make it match as much as you can just so that the balance is the same for the frame I don't know if we could see the inside right here you know, let's, let's remove this real quick so that is that piece as you could see um, countersunk for this side from the reinforcing plate set and that is actually what I ended up doing was cutting off the lip you can see the curve right there cutting off the edges and then this is where the support arms usually go to when you're mounting it from the rear so the the next part is two of the 95306 rear multi-roller setting stay and that's the brake mount so that's these right here you need two of them and this is actually ended up customizing it a little bit um, added an additional set of hole right here so that it goes um, backwards and it's holding another plate of that piece right there and this is more normal what I ended up doing is CNC cutting this side not CNC but mail cutting on this side right there and then over here so that the arms are not like pressing for the brakes right there because you don't want it too long and then this um, these were drilled right there those are additional holes that were drilled into the piece and then also countersunk so that everything is um, normal you don't want it to catch on the track at all you know that could damage it and then we go back to 15478 I've already mentioned you only need one of it remember yeah, this is that's a set that has this thing and that is the anchor piece that goes right there this piece right there um, you could also do it in carbon but that piece is actually a lot harder to find so what I have right now is this and I've also I've done the cut of the of a carbon 
and I'm actually going to end up replacing that at some point. So that's what it's supposed to look like inside. But um, what you got to do is you kind of need to cut off these three holes right there. And then you kind of need to make it a little bit round so that it's less likely to catch on the inside. So that's the frame piece that it's supposed to kind of look like on the inside. All right, for the wheels, there are three sets of parts. The carbon carbon wheel set item number one nine uh nine five two four five the fin the fin set right there these are carbon wheels and then there's the other two sets is for the low friction tire nine five two zero eight and as you can see those are right here for the front and then the super hards not item number nine five zero eight zero are on the back so what this gives me is that it gives me a little bit of a better cornering there's a little bit more grip on the super hard tires right there so that helps push the car forward more quickly on the corners because there's a lot less grip and these are a lot less likely to bite and fight against the the rear both of these tire compounds are actually quite good at absorbing um hits anyway so using them both is actually quite good together and um yeah, these are, I had uh, Mad Tang trim them for me. If I recall correctly, these are 24.2 millimeters in diameter. I wanted, a little, I wanted it a little bit taller so that it has a little bit of a higher top speed. And that allows me to um, jump a little bit further. That was one of the most important things in the 2018 Japan Cup. So 94389 AO620 and you need four. Those are right there. You can see them. You need four of them. I ended up removing the um, the bushings that were actually covering it, um, the bearing covers. You remove them, it makes the transmission a little bit smoother. And then one set of um, 94768 roller spacer. And that's mainly for spacing the wheels away from the bearings right there. Those are that pieces right there. So you need one set of those um, because I think it comes in 20 or something. And then next part is item number 15347, AO520 and straight shafts. And those are actually in here. Those are the straight shafts right there on the inside as you can see. And the, um, the AO520s are over there too being held in place by the 3.7 to 1 gears. And uh, that's one of the tricks I can show you guys. These are motor spacers right there. And um, you're, if, you, if you take apart the stock motor, you could use the spacers that are in there for actually basically like a shim for your gears. That keeps it um, from traveling too far out or too far close to the pinion gear. And then the next is the 3.7 to 1 gear ratio. Item number 15429. You just need one of it because it comes with two. And uh, that's right. That's the 3.7 to 1 gear ratio that I'm using right now. And I use it so that uh, there's a little bit more torque. Uh, even on the 5 lane, it's actually quite okay. Uh, next part is the 15297. Okay, so when I built this, what ended up happening was that I did not have enough 72mm um, hollow drive shafts at the time. And um, the, the shop is too far. It's 45 minutes away for me to drive there. And I ended up having... Um, what do you call it? I ended up using a a reinforced 72 millimeter shaft, but this is supposed to be 72 millimeter hollow uh, drive shaft. So that's what I have at the front. So I only found one straight one. I didn't find a second straight one, but that's honestly what I prefer. Uh, what I recommend for you guys is to use a uh, hollow drive shafts, just because they're easier to find two sets of straight ones from. And you need rubber, right? You need the rubber for the pieces, and then the first part is item number 94792 uh, the 1719 o-rings and um, I'm using three of them right now on the build or you could use more if you want that depends on how you want uh, the, how stiff you want the front to be and the um, I have two sets that are being held in at the front right there the ones that are twisted so that's here and then that's over here it's two sets and then over here this twisted piece of rubber right there is for the catch of the uh what do you call it the anchor setup right there it keeps it 
basically you know in the same place and it pushes it back in the same spot as you can see keeps it um, stable right there and locked in place and the next piece is um, item number 94812 um, you, you basically need one pack but I honestly for any of the o-ring parts I recommend you buy multiples because they're going to snap on you that's just part of the um, nature of the way the setup works they're gonna snap eventually at some point and you need to replace them so that one set is going to give you six pieces one two three and then the same thing over here one two three so basically if you just if you buy one set that's that'll make the setup work but i recommend that you buy more and then the next one is item number one five four zero eight the long stabilizing pole set okay so that that part is actually going to have that ball cap head and because my car is basically purple and pink the only uh, the only piece that actually meshes well with it is red and this is the only part that has that red ball cap so yeah and um that piece i don't know if you guys can see it the end of it is actually cut and like um uh sanded off so that it's flat and that helps keep it push the whole plate down and then keep it in place for the motor um it's just you know the hyper dash pro um item number one five three seven five um let me see if i can show you guys from underneath oh it looks like i have a japan cup version in there and uh there you go that is a hyper dash pro that is the japan cup version so either way you could use either one it doesn't really matter we're gonna have a listen and we're going to check out how this car bounces. All right, so let's listen to the transmission. This is for Hyper Dash right there. So you can see there's no wiggle on the wheels as well. So it's actually quite smooth. And then this is what it sounds like when you actuate them. You can see the springs on the inside as well, right there. Oh yeah, and I also forgot to tell you the spring uh, part number. Item number 10305, and you need one set only, really. You need four of the black ones. They go in there, and they're cut so that they're a little bit um, softer. And um, you need four for the uh, suspension. And then you need one um, stiff spring one for the uh, pivot damper right there. So if you could listen to how it is. That's where it bottoms out. Let's look at the front. This one's a little bit harder to show. I have to flip it so you could see that it's actuating. There you go. Alright. And then we're just going to do a quick uh, drop test. There you go. As you can see. It is quite solid. All right, so we're gonna go cut to race footage. Yeah. 
Thank you. Okay. Thank you.